something I'll never ever forget. He got up, he was going to leave, so he just topped up and walked over and gave me a kiss. He said, I'll have you there. He said, I'll catch up with you later. But I never really got to talk to him after that. amongst everything with dad, always wanting to give him a hand with anything. Severely energetic <laughs> and at the same time very loyal. He loved riding the horses. We'd go out and uh, muster, we might muster five or six hundred head and Melissa would hop out in the lead and Dale would take the wing and away we'd go. I was very protective of him and then as he got older he became protective of me. Dale and I met at a party. When he walked into the room, his smile would light up the room. We put an ad in for a first year apprentice and Julie and I sat down and went through it all. And... Then I saw Dale's name and I just remember sweeping the rest into the bin and saying to him, this is the person you want to be your apprentice. He always talked about where he wanted to go further once he'd finished his apprenticeship. He was more competent, more professional than some of the trades that I've employed in my business. Uh, I had a, a system going that if they could beat me at my rules and regulations, well, I'd put on a cart and a beer for the boys. So they're always trying to outsmart the boss. And when Dale beat me one day, my nose got rubbed in it for many months. And if he was alive today, he'd still be doing it. When we found out that I was pregnant, I was already three and a half months. They were young parents, so they, they were a little bit nervous about that, but they, they were way beyond their years with their maturity. He wanted to be that hands-on dad and provider. He cried when he first saw him. He did everything that a dad should do, changed nappies, fed him. He also went through a bit of a change, I think, when he, went, when he had Cooper as well. Like, he was always a larrikin, but he, he really knuckled down and got serious as soon as Cooper came into the world, so. Cooper was his whole world. From day one, he was proud of Cooper. I saw a young man grow up very quickly overnight. He went from a boy to me. It was on the Tuesday night. He said to me, what would you do if I asked you to marry me tomorrow? Because tomorrow is the last three even dates for a long time, and it was the 12th of the 12th of the 12th. I got a phone call from Dale's boss saying that Dale had been electrocuted and could I get out to Bentley Park College as quick as possible. It took me a while to get there because of in the morning traffic going out. When I got there, the, the media and everybody was at the school. There was ambulances, there was fire brigades. And on the way in, one of Dale's work colleagues was standing there and he had his head hung. He just didn't look at me. And I knew it was bad. And I was lying on the floor of the room, covered up with a sheet. And they took the sheet off so that I could sit there and talk to him and give him a cuddle and give him a kiss. I remember coming into the, into the room um, after being told that Dale had had an incident. Um, I saw the shock horror on three or four of the, the school faces that were there. Uh, the paramedics were there and the image I go to bed with every night is um, the paramedics working on him. I worked at the school and I knew that Wayne and Dale and his other workers were there that day. I tried to go into the room where the emergency services were working on Dale. I was begging just to go in and hold his hand. I just wanted to hold his hand. And it wasn't until I walked in the, in the office where Dan was that I looked and I thought, <laughs> This can't be good. Because I thought to myself, he's going to say two names probably. Melissa or Dale. And then everywhere outside, when we're walking, everything was just dark and, and the, the world was grey. I received the phone call in the morning from Debbie to go over there. Just like my whole body shot up, I thought something was up. And then as I got out of the car, Dan told me what had happened. Yeah, I walked in the door and as soon as I seen 
everyone, I just said, what, what's happened to Dale? Where's Dale? And I pretty much collapsed as they told me what happened. I was just broken and I just cried. I've never, ever been so hurt and just destroyed. It's not really a phone call you ever want to get. You don't know what to say. I don't even, I was kind of like, what do you, what do you mean he's gone? Like, the first thing I thought when I heard he had died, I was like, I just hope that it was quick and he wasn't laying there thinking about Cooper without him. On that day, they arrived at the school and they were supposed to start in a different building, not that building. He was working in the ceilings, um, just running cable for a CCTV, I think, because the school had been getting broken into. So he wasn't even doing any electrical work. I think Dar was lent against the air conditioning unit to move his soul board just a bit further. And when he put his hand out on the beam and his back, he got electrocuted through his back. Electrical injuries, and particularly industrial electrical injuries, are very common. Whether you live or die can't be summed up in one particular little rule or otherwise. It depends on the degree of exposure, the amount of current that passes through the body, where it passes. Let's say someone contacts electric uh, current through their two hands. Current will pass up one arm, through the chest, and to the other side broadly speaking. The danger there is that it passes very close to the heart and it can induce uh, heart rhythms which stops its ability to pump blood regularly to the remainder of the body. The best way to reduce the risk of electrical incidents in roof spaces is to turn the power off at the switchboard and make sure no one turns it back on again. However, it's important to remember that by turning off the power at the switchboard, you may not turn off all the sources of power in the roof space. For instance, solar cables and mains cables will remain live even when you have turned off the power at the switchboard and these risks will need to be controlled. The Electrical Safety Office also strongly recommends safety switches be fitted on all circuits of domestic, commercial and industrial premises. Sadly, there have been too many electrocutions and serious electrical incidents due to contact with live parts in roof spaces. Some of the most common causes appear to be pierced cables making metal parts such as roof battens live, cables damaged by vermin, unterminated cables or faulty equipment. These hazards are difficult to see. Roof spaces can be dark and difficult to navigate. You just don't know what dangers are lurking. So the simple and most effective way to keep workers safer up there is to switch off the power. You know, sometimes when you lose someone, people think, oh, you might not want to talk about it, so they don't bring him up, but we, we rather talk about him, so he's not, he's not just a memory, he's still alive every day. It wasn't what you think life was going to be. It just rips your heart clean out. You just, it changes you. You're just not the same person anymore that you used to be. And now we've got a little boy growing up without his father. When Dale died, the police took all Dale's clothing. They took everything that Dale had on him that day. And it wasn't until a fair while after that I was able to get some of Dale's processions back. And Dale's phone was one of them. And on that night before Dale died, he took a little video of Cooper. I love you. <laughs> It's the most precious thing I've, and it's the only thing that I've got Dale's voice on, and I've listened to it a million times. When I think about Cooper, I think a lot about Dale, um, because Cooper's about that age now when I taught Dale. Like father, like son. <laughs> Cooper was a mirror image of Dale when he was growing As he's getting older now, we can... He's asking questions. He's asking a lot of questions and telling about his dad's mates and all the things that he used to do. You just have to look at Cooper and I see just different parts of him as Dale. And it's nice, it's, he's still around. Mm. Try and keep Dale's memory alive in many ways. Uh, one of the things that we do 
every year is there's a Skills 360 Awards Night and one of the awards that's given out is the Dale Kennedy Award. It goes to an apprentice who shows mateship, works well in a team, aware of safety, like how to keep themselves and others safe at work, a hard worker, pretty much what Dale was. My husband organised with his car club to do a big cruise. There were thousands and thousands of people and we raised a lot of money, over $20,000 for Cooper. On the first anniversary of Dale's death, we planted a tree in his memory. Outside the building he was electrocuted in. Every year on his anniversary we can go to and lay flowers or just feel like we're sort of with him for a moment. Any worker entering any ceiling space to perform work should turn off the power. Definitely having such a loving family and supportive family like my mum and dad, Debbie and Danny and Melissa. Um, knowing them before Dale passed and then seeing what it did to them, it took a big toll emotionally and physically on them both. And it's only recently we've sort of seen that they've started to live again 